Hey everybody and welcome back to another Max Velocity weather forecast. And in today's forecast, we'll be talking about a massive pattern change that'll be coming to the United States this week. And this is gonna change a lot of things as the polar vortex is about to unleash a lot of cold air across much of the United States with an Arctic blast that is imminent here in the country. Now we are also gonna be watching for multiple winter storms over the next few days, which we will be breaking down for you in this forecast. In addition to that, there is a threat for for severe weather both tomorrow and on Tuesday and that will lead to the threat of some damaging winds and even a few tornadoes and a couple of those could be strong. We'll be breaking down everything that you need to know in this weather forecast but I do want to first begin with what's happening here over the next several days and give you the broad idea of what we're going to be seeing with that arctic blast and as well as the future radar give you an idea of where these winter storms are going to be. So beginning with today again it's pretty dry overall today the only exception to this is that we still have our winter storm ongoing in the northeast primarily primarily in New England, like Massachusetts, New Hampshire, Maine, etc. Those areas are still seeing some moderate to heavy snowfall, but a lot of that will be moving out as we go into later this afternoon into the evening hours, so that will start to wind down as we go into tonight. What we need to watch for next is a storm that will be originating over the Rocky Mountains. Now, this came actually from the Pacific Ocean, but it's going to be sitting over the Rocky Mountains here for the next 24 to 36 hours, and once we go into Monday morning, this will start to grow and explode, essentially, across the Central and Southern Plains. So, look Look at this by 6 a.m. on Monday. We are going to have a lot of different aspects to this particular storm. The first of which will be the showers and thunderstorms. This will be the area to watch for for severe weather, including a threat of damaging winds and a few tornadoes on both Monday and Tuesday. A couple of those tornadoes could be strong. The best chance for any of these threats will be on the immediate Gulf Coast. So if you're back down in like Louisiana, for example, or in southeast Texas, just east of Houston and back through Mississippi and Alabama and the southern side of those states, there is going to be a risk for a few tornadoes and again a couple of those could be strong so have a tornado action plan in place if you're in those areas on the flip side of things we're gonna have a winter storm that'll be brewing on the central and northern side of this low pressure system and that is gonna be located over the rocky mountains and back through the central plains going into monday morning once we go throughout the afternoon that snow picks up in intensity it'll become heavier across areas like kansas northern missouri back through southern iowa and southeast parts of nebraska so again if you're in those areas there could be some travel impacts For Further down to the south, that's where severe weather will begin to ramp up. The main concern will be during the afternoon and evening hours. Again, if you're along the Gulf Coast with, again, damaging winds and a few tornadoes being possible. Once we go into Tuesday evening, that winter storm will start to move off to the north and east. Same thing with the severe weather. That'll begin to move to the east as well. Again, notice the heavy snowfall moving into the Midwest as we go into the overnight hours Monday into Tuesday morning. Heaviest of the snowfall will arrive to the Midwest as we go into Tuesday morning. So again, notice those darker blues across northern Illinois and as well Wisconsin those areas are going to be dealing with the heaviest of the snowfall Tuesday morning and then once we go throughout the afternoon and evening hours that snow continues across parts of the Midwest and heavy snowfall will return to the northern parts of New England as we go into Wednesday morning so that'll be something to watch for there as well and then once we go into Thursday a little clipper system will bring a little bit more snowfall to the Midwest but it will not drop much more than maybe an inch or two of additional snowfall on top of this winter storm. Now, once we get closer to Thursday and Friday that is when things become very 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 interesting and the main reason why is because we have the polar vortex sitting well up to the north, and I'll show you that here in just a second, but that polar vortex is essentially going to unleash cold air to much of the United States. An Arctic blast will start to usher in, and notice these dash blue lines. That is all cold air advection, and all that cold air advection will be plowing out of Canada, diving to the south with a little bit of warm air advection right there along the Gulf Coast and in the southern tier of the United States. And what's also interesting about this is that we will likely get another low pressure system to ride right along here in the southern and central plains and this could also bring the threat of a winter storm and maybe even some severe weather as we get closer to friday of this upcoming week so a lot of things to watch here this will be something to watch for that will be interesting as well the one key thing though with this is that the winter storm aspect is very uncertain we've seen a lot of different trends with the european model showing the winter storm will be way up to the midwest we've also seen some trends where it's down here closer to the mid-atlantic region so this is a bit of an uncertainty point for now with this winter storm but it looks likely we'll have a winter storm somewhere in the united states as we get closer of Friday into Saturday as this Arctic blast starts to usher in. Now notice all the cold air here up in Canada. That's where all this cold air is currently sitting and this is going to cycle a little bit over the next few days and you'll notice this will all dive down to the south or not all of it but a lot of it will start to kind of leak out into the central and northern plains as we go into Thursday and Friday of this week and that just gives you the representation here that all this air has been building up and now it's about to unleash into the northern parts of the United States and that'll eventually trickle down to the central and southern plains and as well as the Midwest. 
to give you a better understanding of what I'm talking about here in the United States in terms of temperatures, I'm going to show you the temperature anomalies. This gives you an idea in your particular location. So again, anywhere in the United States here, we're talking about the average temperatures. We're talking about the difference from the average temperature. So if you see any of this orange or red, that's representing above average temperatures. And the degree or the number is going to represent the degrees in Fahrenheit from average. And also the blue would be representing below average temperatures. And again, look at this. This is Tuesday morning. Notice above average temperatures across the Midwest and as well as the East Coast. This will change as we go into Wednesday with a little bit of colder air starting to leak into areas in Missouri and as well as the Southeast. By no means is this the Arctic blast because what you're going to see on Thursday and Friday is even crazier. This is what we're going to be looking at going to Thursday. Below average temperature is going to leak into the Midwest and the Northern Plains. 20 degrees below average. That's nothing too crazy, right? Once we go into Friday and Saturday, the European model and GFS model have been very, very unison here with a really cold pocket of air. I mean, we're talking potential for upwards of 50 to 60 degrees below average in parts of southern Canada. Look at this. I mean, that's just uncalled for in a lot of cases, even with Arctic blasts. But even here in the United States, we're still talking about the potential for 30 to 40 degrees below average across much of the central and southern plains and even back into the northern plains. So this is what we're going to be basically watching for as we go into this upcoming weekend. But one thing I do want to point out is anything beyond really Saturday becomes uncertain. Will we see that cold air sit around in the Midwest? Will it go further down to the south? Those things are still in question. Another big uncertainty point to everything I've just said is that it might be a bit slower than what the GFS model is showing. What I mean by that is when we look at the European model, notice the cold air mass is actually sitting well back up to the north Saturday night, and it's not really leaking that much into the central and southern plains. So one key thing that we need to watch for over the next few days is the timing of when this Arctic blast will unleash here in the United States. Will it be Saturday? Will it be Sunday? Will it be Monday? Etc. That's going to be something that we need to work out over the next few days, and that'll give us a better idea of how cold it'll get across you know, the United States in your particular location, and exactly how cold will it get? That's the big question. Obviously, some areas could be 50 to 60 degrees below average, and some areas might still be at average, depending on how far south this area does leak down to the south. But again, the European model is lagging about a day behind in terms of this cold air mass going south, so keep that in mind. Again, it's not set in stone in terms of the timing. What I will say is that it is still very likely we will be dealing with an Arctic blast at some point in mid-January. So again, make sure you're prepared for that. Just make sure you're monitoring the weather more than anything closely. No reason to go panic and buy toilet paper at the store or anything like that. But obviously, make sure you're watching the weather very closely. And as long as you're subscribed to the channel, we will be keeping you posted with the latest. Now, in terms of the wind chills, if this all ends up happening, this is just for example on Saturday morning. So in terms of the Arctic blast, when it ends up happening, we will be talking about wind chills below zero and potentially as much as 30, 40, 50 degrees below zero across parts of the central and northern plains. But again, when this exactly happens is still uncertain. Though it says Saturday morning on here, again, this might not happen Saturday morning. It might not happen until Monday, Tuesday, or maybe even a little bit more down the road. So keep that in mind. Again, that is the possibility, though, of what this will end up doing. Now, I do want to backtrack to the winter storm for just a second. I want to give you an idea of how much snow you'll be seeing here across the central plains and the Midwest. Notice here, this is what we're looking at in terms of the probabilities of seeing greater than four inches of snowfall going into Monday night to Tuesday. Again, notice around a 50, 60, 70 percent chance for those in Iowa back through parts of Missouri. Highest probabilities, though, will be here in this orange, where that does include areas in southeast Nebraska, northern Kansas, and as well as parts of northern Missouri. And notice that shifts a bit further out here to the east since it's a 24-hour period, but areas in the southern Iowa and northern Missouri will also have a pretty high likelihood of seeing greater than four inches of snowfall. In terms of the European model, this is what it gives you an idea on, on the estimate in terms of snowfall totals. Again, notice the highest snowfall totals across northern Kansas, southeast Nebraska, back into northern Missouri and southeast Iowa, where many of these areas will see between four to eight inches of snow, with maybe an ice isolated spot seeing upwards of 10 inches of snow. Probabilities back over in the Midwest pretty high if you're just west of Chicago upwards of 95 to 100 percent chance now of seeing greater than four inches of snowfall as we go into Tuesday. This is the snowfall total estimate again notice four to eight inches of snow likely in parts of Iowa northern and western Illinois and as well as southern Wisconsin and as well as northern Michigan. Chicago will probably only see a couple inches of snow maybe two to four at best. You're right there in the warm air sector so it's gonna be a little bit harder there to see any snow fall in that particular location. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to hit the like button down below and subscribe if you've not already.